Hi, this will be a brief recording and tutorial on uh, how to do the initial switch setup. Um, I've gone ahead and discovered the switch in High View. Um, the walkthrough will include not just uh, clearing some of the security alarms, but also on how to set link loss alarms on the switch. So first I'm going to go into the switch. I'm going to log in with the oops, must have fat fingered that with the default password for admin, which is private in a lowercase. And in the login screen you'll see that there are a few errors. I'm going to make sure that these errors are cleared. And you will find these under diagnostics status configuration and within there we have device status that you can set. The device status controls this alarm right here. Then we have the security status which is this one here and then the signal contact status which is this one here. So first we're going to clear the device status. So in device status I'm currently monitoring the temperature I'm also monitoring the power supply and in the switch the alarm is given for power supply 2 so I'm only currently powering this one power supply so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the monitoring for the second power supply so I'm going to click set I'm going to do a reload and I'm going to click on the status tab and when I click on the status tab you'll notice there are no errors or no alarms or warnings given so if I now go back to system you'll see that this has been cleared I'm now going to go ahead and do the same for the security status so I'm going to go to security status and with security status I'm currently monitoring a bunch of uh, parameters that I would like to ensure that uh, the plant staff is going to follow and um, and employ as far as best practice. So in light of the fact that um, we're just looking to clear this for now and uh, that we're not going to address each one individually, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear all of them. So I've clicked the first one and I'm going to hold the shift button and I'm going to press the last one or click on the last one and I'm going to let go of the shift and this will have uh, automatically selected or in this case deselected all of them and I can reverse this as well clicking the first holding the shift clicking again and we've now selected all of them so it's a little um, inside trick to uh, select multiple in, um, instances so had I not done this uh, just to show you the alarms let me do a quick reload I'm going to remove the modifications. So this is the way that it was. So these are the alarms. These alarms here is what you saw or what you see right here. So by clearing them, I now have cleared the alarms and these two have cleared here. So the last one is the signal contact status. So for the signal contact status, uh, it is currently monitoring temperature and the power supply. So I'm going to disable the second power supply. And you may have heard in the background the little click. That is the relay. And if I now do a reload, you'll see that the alarm has gone off of here as well as here. So now that I've disabled the and um, cleared the alarms um, again best practice uh, would dictate addressing each one individually uh, so for example second power supply actually having a second power supply for the password making sure that you actually have changed the default password and so on and so forth and clearing the alarms by addressing them not just overriding them so now that we've done that the next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to set a link loss alarm. So I currently have a connection 
on port 6, port 9, and port 11. And you can also see that here on port 6, 9, and 11. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a link loss alarm. And the link loss alarm can be set in the device status. Under device status, you will see a port. So port 6, 9, and 11. And I want to monitor those ports. So I'm going to hit set. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to monitor for connection error. And I do want it to send a trap. This is going to be an SNMP trap that gets then sent out to an NMS. In this case, it would be industrial high vision, which we will show you uh, in a later video. So once I've done this, I can hit set. So at this point, if I were to have a link loss on any of those ports, and in this case, we will show you, you know, there are currently no alarms. So if I hit a reload, you'll see that there are no alarms. And if I now unplug one of those links, I will have an alarm showing for that port that I just unplugged. Now the switch itself, the relay, did not trigger because I have not triggered the relay here. So port 6, 9, and 11 set. And then I'm going to monitor for connection error and you'll hear click in a second because I still have this unplugged and you now have the relay triggered for that port. So again I can also have a, um, a trap generated just by this um, and or also by the device status. So once that's done, um, obviously all these changes are currently in volatile memory. You will then need to go into the load save tab and within the load save tab, save the configuration from non-volatile memory into volatile, sorry, uh, from volatile memory into the non-volatile memory so that the changes uh, will uh, persist through a, um, a reset of the switch or power cycle. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much. Have a great day. So as a continuation of the last presentation um, where I showed the ability to create a link loss alarm within the switch management, this will show how to create a link loss alarm utilizing the high vision uh, features of multi-config. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm first off going to go into preferences and I'm going to make sure that my scan range is within the range of or in the same subnet as my PC. So in this case, I'm on a 10, 10, 10. Uh, my laptop is a 99, so this range should suffice. And I'm looking to also discover switches with high discovery just in case there are any switches out there that I have not addressed yet. And what I'm then going to go do is I'm going to go down to the management station and I'm going to ensure that my prefix is properly set. So if I do address any new devices that it's going to be significantly easier. I also want to make sure that the IP address management station, um, which is where all the traps are going to be set to, uh, is the desired IP address. In this case, again, it's my laptop and a high discovery protocol that I'm utilizing the appropriate interface card instead of uh, potentially a, a virtual uh, port or even the, uh, the wireless card uh, in my laptop. So once all that's been done, I can click on apply. And from here, I can now go ahead and do a network scan. So I'm going to scan the network for any new devices.
So here we have the switch that we had previously uh, configured. Uh, this is a it's an RSP35. Uh, you'll notice that it currently does not have a security alarm. Um, this is because I have disabled the security alarming um, and monitoring for uh, those switches, or at least for some of the switches. So just to make sure that these are cleared, I'm going to go ahead and deactivate all of these. And I'm going to do a control A for all and a control R to acknowledge all status changes. So in this case, we sh um, still show a warning. The configuration has not been saved. So I've just recently made some changes to this. And those changes were to uh, disable the monitoring of the ports uh, for the sake of showing you how to do this with uh, the high discovery, sorry, with the um, high vision. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select that switch. Um, this is the 10.2, and I'm going to go to the ports. And in this case, I've got port 9. Let's sort these ports. So I've got port 4, where I have a connection. I've got port 9 and port 11. Uh, you'll notice in the previous presentation, I believe it was port 6, 9, 11. I've moved a couple things around simply for the sake of uh, showing links and link losses. So in this case, we've got port, again, port 4, 9, and 11 that I've selected. I've selected these ports by holding down the control button to select multiple ports. I can then right click and go to multi-config. And within multi-config, because I'm at the port level, I can now go to the propagate connection error for device status and I can then trigger or propagate the connection error which is the link loss alarm. So in this case uh, that alarm is going to propagate and I'm going to rate this and at this point in time, if I were to lose a link, I want to also make sure that the relay triggers. So in this case, I'm going to go to the signal contact as well. And I want to make sure that that error is also going to propagate there. So now, if I were to unplug, I hear the relay trigger and I know that I have an alarm status uh, from that switch. So in this case, let me go back to all of them. Uh, and you'll also see here that I have a lost device. This device here was initially connected to this switch right here. And this is the link that I have just lost um, because I'm currently um, I've not set up the traps yet to this device uh, which is why uh, this one is going to take a little longer to react uh, to that lost link so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in and again the relay turned off so what I now want to do is I want to make sure that this trap propagates on up so I'm going to go to the multi-config and this would be under, you'll have to bear with me here for a minute. It would be under diagnostics and trap destinations. So I'm gonna have a new trap destination and the IP address for that is going to be 10.10.10.99. And uh, it's going to be active, and we're going to call this uh, laptop. So we're going to go ahead and write this. So this, what we've done should replicate very much the same thing as if I were to log into this. Beep. 
So it should replicate very much the same as having done, um, where is it? Status configuration, alarms, traps, the same as this. So the, um, the trap is now set. And again, you'll notice that there's a little warning triangle here. And also, if you hover over this, it shows that the configuration has not been saved. From here, what I can do is I can go to multi-config. And within multi-config, I can do a load save, save to device. And now I have a status change. I can do a control R after selecting it um, just to acknowledge that status change. So now I have a trap set. I also have the link loss alarms set in this switch. So now if I have a loss of link, uh, this I should have a SNMP trap that then gets set, um, sent out from this switch and it should then also register here within uh, industrial high vision. So just also show the, the current topology. Let me create a new topology. And you may notice that the, um, the trap has not been received from the switch. This may also be partially due to my firewall, but um, be assured that the switch is showing a fault and um, has uh, has alarmed. I'm going to stop this and do this over. Obviously, could not find the rest of the network with it being unplugged. Here we have my little network. Uh, you'll see my workstation right here. And this was, I believe, the device that I just had unplugged. So I hope this helps. Uh, have a great day. Bye.